In this video, I'm going to look at using a travelling microscope to try and verify the slit separation of this Young's double slit that I've got down here. So, this travelling microscope, the important things to notice is this is the little microscope that you look through, and there's a focus control for it there. Then you have this knob here which you can turn, and when you turn that, it will move the whole microscope and this vernier scale here along this way and that way. And the idea is that you look through the microscope and you adjust this until it is over the first slit. To help you do this, in the microscope view, which I'm showing over here, there is a thin bit of wire which gives you the centre of the microscope. And so it'll be that thin bit of wire that you're trying to centre over the first slit. Then you take the vernier reading and then you note that down. Once you've taken down your first vernier reading, very carefully, without knocking anything and moving it, you will gently turn the knob here so that the wire moves until it is over the other slit. And when you have done that, the vernier scale will have moved along and you'll be able to read the new value from the vernier scale and if you find the difference between those two values, it should give you the slit separation. This shows the view with the slit positioned underneath the microscope part. And this shows it ready to go. You can just see the slits under there. Now, in the next bit of the video, you won't be able to see this part properly because I've put a phone over the top of this so that I can give you a view of what's being seen through the microscope at the same time as showing you the whole picture of what's happening down here. At the appropriate points, the main video will be paused and zoomed in on the vernier scale so you can take down what you think the starting vernier scale reading is and what the final vernier scale reading is and then you can try and find the slit separation. First thing that we're going to do is turn this until the view through the viewfinder has the um, piece of wire perfectly lined up with the first slit, which I would say is about there. Once we have done that, we need to read off the vernier reading from the scale here. So let's zoom in on the vernier scale to give you a chance to try and read what you think the vernier scale is saying at the moment. And now that you've had a chance to do that, let's continue the video. Then we need to turn this again so that the wire on the view lines up with the second slit. Let me just adjust second camera and there we are then it's lined up with the second slit and now we'd need to read that vernier scale again once again let's zoom in on that vernier scale to give you a chance to work out what you think it is now reading Pause the video and work out what you think the slit separation is from those two vernier readings. Then continue with the video. Let's consider the starting reading first. And if we look very carefully at the position of this, we can see it is just to the left of the 50. And that tells us that our reading is going to be 49 point something. And then we need to carefully look along and find where the vernier scale line perfectly lines up with the main scale line. And if we look carefully, it is, I think, the 0.8. So that would make this 49.8 millimetres at the start. Then we need to do the same thing at the end. So if we look carefully at the end, we can see that this is 49 and this is 50. So this is a little bit more than 49. And again, we need to look 
carefully along here and find where the vernier scale line perfectly lines up with the main scale line and i would say that that is 49.2 therefore so that gives me an end value of 49.2 so that would give me the slit separation of the difference between those two so that would give me 49.8 minus 49.2 which would give me 0 0.6 millimeters and they were labeled as 0 0.5 millimeters and that's not too bad the only thing to point out is that perhaps I would have had a parallax error because of the direction that my video was being made from not being perfectly overhead from the scale. So if you were reading this in a lab, you'd want to make sure that your eye was directly above the scale that you were reading. But not a bad effort if you got 0.6 millimeters for your reading. I hope you found this video useful.